Aloha Shamans, and welcome to our little corner of the galaxy in this dimensional space called Earth Star Spiritual Center. It is, uh, let's see, today is Monday, yes, Monday, April 8th, 2024, and we happen to have a cosmic event upon us. Uh, so we have a wonderful solar eclipse going to be happening uh, around 3 o'clock to 3.30 will be our, our time frame. We want to be in meditation. So we are Dale and Jeannie Stacy, your host for today, and we are the abbots of Earth Star Spiritual Center. Uh, Jeannie uh, is going to do a welcome for you and give you a, a nice little uh, thought as we go into this wonderful meditation ceremony time. Thanks, baby. Um, I want to welcome all of you today. I think today we have a real opportunity um, to work as a collective, to uh, see the beauty of God, to set our intentions, to be loving, respectful, compassionate, uh, kind, honest, peaceful. We have a big window of change here. So what is your focus going to be? What is your intention going to be? What intention will you set for you, for yourself? And what intention will you set for your family? And also, what intention will you set for humanity? Really, really important at this time in our world. So think about that as we go through the show. And there will be an opportunity toward the end maybe for you to express if you'd like to share those intentions that you set today. Outstanding. Look. One, good. All right. Well, let's go through a few slides just to explain what we're going to do today. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's Trisha. take a, Trisha's here. Hey, Hello, Trisha. Trisha. Aloha. Thank you for joining us. Hope you have a great eclipse. Talk to you soon. So as we go through our slides, just to give you a general introduction to Merkabas, and then also we're going to be doing a unity breath today, and then also we'll do a green tea ceremony. So during this uh, next few minutes, uh, try to make sure you have some green tea available for our, uh, meditation that we'll do from 3 o'clock to 3.30, and then we'll come back online and do a live chat after that. So when, uh, and if you don't have green tea, just use any kind of tea, that'll be fine. And if you don't have tea, just some kind of liquid, okay? We just want to make sure we kind of cleanse our energy field of whatever we do. Okay. All right, so let's jump right into the slides because we want to be ready for our green tea ceremony at 3 o'clock. That way we can be in meditation for the rest of the time to 3.30, and then we'll come back. All right, so just some things about the, the meditation itself. So again, solar eclipse, Merkabas, green tea, meditation. Uh, so this is the path of the Merkaba that's going to be. You can see it starts in the Central Pacific. Uh, so this thing, this starts in the middle of uh, Lemuria, or Mu, as we affectionately know it. And it comes all the way into Mexico, the United States, goes across the heartland, exits through uh, up there in Canada and Maine, and then it goes all the way off the southwest coast or, or southwest of Ireland. So it goes from Pacific to the Atlantic. That means it's going from Mu to Atlantis. So you see how far that uh, the effect of the eclipse works as far as partial. So uh, make sure that we understand this is transoceanic. Okay. And uh, so we're going to have that in mind. Okay. Trish, uh, you're welcome, Trish. Thank you for joining us uh, at the beach. Oh, my gosh. Well, wonderful. Oh, water. Of course, you're around that water. We know why. <laughs> That's it. Keep that up. Okay. Uh -huh. Hi, Beth. Thank you for joining oh, from Virginia. Yeah. Oh, Heidi invited you. Thank you so very much. Okay. Have, a, have a great eclipse as we go through this meditation. Thanks for being here. All right, so that's going to be the path to the eclipse. Okay. All right, next slide then. Uh, just to show you that what we're going to do today with the Merkabas. So you see the little red um, Merkabas or the two-dimensional Merkabas. There is a hex, uh, you know, six-sided. So this is what we did back in 2015 for the Atlantic uh, Continental Oceanic Polar uh, Merkabas that Mother Earth uh, asked that we set up, and we were actually physically in Bermuda when we did this with Amanda Todd. Okay. All right, and then we did the same thing in the uh, Pacific Ocean because we had to get moved. So we were physically in Hawaii at this time. We're off the uh, uh, the north coast of Maui when we did this, and we had uh, several shamans with us that traveled with us to Maui at that time, and we set up this continental oceanic polar. Uh, uh, Merkabic field, and th that way it goes from the North Pole to South Pole, so it covered that whole part of the ocean. And then we did this one remote. This was from Malta. You see the little pink Merkaba in the center there in the Mediterranean, right there in Italy. Uh, so Mother Earth asked that we do this, and this was September 18th of last year. 
So again, 13 Macabas again, North Pole, South Pole, because she asked that we could place one through Europe and through the heart of Africa, all the way to the pole. So we certainly accommodated him. And then this is how it looks on a big screen. Then if we put them all together, you see on the left, the little red Macabas that goes through the uh, Pacific Ocean. So that's Mu or Lemuria. And then you see in the center there, that's along the uh, Atlantic Ridge, and that goes through uh, the Atlantic Ocean or through Bermuda or and th also through Atlantis area. And then you see the one to the right there as it goes through Europe and Africa. So this is pole to pole, and each one of those are uh, uh, 13 chakra or 13 Merkabas, and each one of those are 15 miles wide and tall. All right, then the next one, this is just to give you a picture of what we're going to accomplish today here in just a few minutes. We want to start the Macabre. You see the, the bright, the big red one there, right there in the center of the Pacific Ocean. And then one at a time, we're going to uh, do a Trinity breath, which is a okay? just three little breaths. And we're going to send this Macabre out from our uh, Aloha hearts. So those of you who have a Merkaba, you can do this. You can do the, do the external Merkabas. And those who are working with an Aloha bubble, please add your Aloha bubble to our Merkabas. Okay? Now, these Merkabas are heart Merkabas. So that means they're feminine Merkabas. Okay? So if you're working solely with male Merkabas or mental Merkabas, just know that if you send that out, it will be absorbed into the feminine aspect of the love. And that's going to be okay, too, because we know your intentions are pure. So we're going to do this one at a time. Notice that you have a uh, the anchoring uh, Merkabas. You have one at the very beginning in the Pacific Ocean. You have one in the very center in the United States and one on the far right. You can see there and that's southwest of Ireland okay, in the Atlantic Ocean. So these chakras are, or these Merkabas then, they're the same size. They're, they're all 15 miles uh, going up and down and side to side. So uh, I just put those on there for emphasis so you can understand how these are going to be anchoring points okay, for us. All right. That's wonderful. Okay. All right. Now let's get ready for our, our uh, Merkaba uh, chain that we're going to make. So let's move right into a unity breath. So just get yourself nice and calm. And just breathe calmly. Just feel the love around you. Feel all the excitement around you. All right, now, number one, just be calm in your heart. Okay, number two, we're just going to send some wonderful heart energy down to Mother Earth. So just take a deep, deep inhale. And then as we exhale, let me show you a Trinity breath up close. So Trinity breath is... Okay, so three breaths. That's what we want to do. Okay, a Trinity breath. Okay. All right, now we're going to inhale in the heart. Now exhale from the heart down to Mother Earth, down to the root chakra. Allow that energy to mix with Mother Earth. Now sense the energy of Mother Earth. Sense the love. See it, hear it, feel it. Now what you do, now inhale. Bring that energy of Mother Earth right up through the root chakra. Inhale. And then just exhale it right into your personal heart. Okay, same thing with Father, Son. Again, be in your heart. Be calm in the heart. And this time we're going to send that energy up through the crown chakra, up to Father, Son. So again, take a deep breath. Inhale. And as we exhale, do a trinity breath up through the crown chakra. Through the crown chakra. Right to Father, Son. Sense, feel and know the energy of Father, Son. And now inhale back to the crown chakra, right to the heart. And now move that energy throughout the body as now we have the energy of Mother Earth and Father, Son in our heart. And as you breathe, just move this energy throughout the body. Outstanding unity breath. All right, now let's move on to the next one. Now we're ready.
Okay. So now being your Aloha bubble or your alpha sphere, for those who have a Merkaba, uh, the center picture will be for you. So just imagine that Merkaba around you. Those who are working with the Aloha bubbles, just imagine the figures to the left and to the right. Okay. So imagine your chakras are energized and you're surrounded by a beautiful Aloha bubble. And so if you're working with the Aloha bubble, this is what you're going to blow uh, toward the Merkaba to join with the Merkaba that we're going to create. Okay. One, there we are. All right, so this is our first one. So we're going to do our Trinity breath, and we're going to create, we're going to send the external Merkaba to that point where you see the red Merkaba, or you're going to send your Aloha bubble there. Okay. All right, take a deep breath. You're in your heart and exhale, Trinity breath. Imagine that Merkaba is 15 miles tall, 15 miles wide. The top point of the Merkaba is attached to the unity grid around Mother Earth. And the bottom point is attached to the very heart of Mother Earth. So that way it's attached, top and bottom. And we're going to activate all 13 later and they'll start spinning. Okay, now the next one. Great job. Here's the next one. Okay. Take a deep breath. Exhale, Trinity breath. So send that macabre or that aloha bubble to that first yellow macabre. 15 miles high, 15 miles wide, attached to the top and bottom. Good. Okay, next one. Again. Trinity breath. Take a deep breath. Again, this one is 15 miles tall, 15 miles wide, attached to the top and bottom. Excellent. Next. Take a deep breath. Exhale, Trinity breath. Good. Merkaba or Aloha bubble to that Merkaba. 15 miles high. 15 miles wide, attached to the top and bottom. Very good. We're getting there. We're on number four. Okay. Number five. Again, deep inhale. Exhale, Trinity breath. Good. This Merkaba also, 15 miles tall, 15 miles wide, attached to the top and bottom. Wonderful. Okay. Next. Again, deep breath. Inhale. Exhale, Trinity breath. <laughs> Wonderful. That Merkaba also 15 miles tall, 15 miles wide, attached to the top and bottom. Excellent. Next one. Okay, this one's in the heartland of Mother Earth. Take a deep breath. Exhale, Trinity breath. <laughs> Wonderful. That one's also 15 miles tall, 15 miles wide, attached to the top and bottom. Remember, they're all attached to the unity grid surrounding Earth at the top and attached to the bottom, to the heart of Mother Earth. Wonderful. Okay. Next one. There it is. Okay. Take a deep breath. Exhale, Trinity breath. Again, 15 miles tall, 15 miles wide, attached to top and bottom. Next one. Deep breath. Exhale, Trinity breath. Wonderful. A Merkaba or an Aloha bubble. So this Merkaba is 15 miles tall, 15 miles wide, attached to top and bottom. Outstanding. Next one. Deep breath. Inhale. Trinity breath. Yes, this Merkaba is 15 miles tall and wide, attached top and bottom. Wonderful. Next. Getting close. Again, inhale, exhale, Trinity breath. 15 miles tall and wide, attached top and bottom. Outstanding. Another one. Okay, take a deep breath. Inhale, exhale, Trinity breath. 15 miles tall and wide, attached top and bottom. And then one more. Our anchoring point in the Atlantic Ocean. Again, take a deep breath. 
Inhale, exhale, trinity breath. Again, 15 miles tall and wide, attached to the top and bottom. Good. Aloha, Heidi. Thanks for being here. All right, now we have 13 Merkabas along the span of this path of the Merkaba. Again, the, the big red Merkabas are not necessarily larger than the others. They're all 15 miles tall and wide. This is just to show you, show you an anchoring point for the Merkaba chain. Okay? Now, the Merkabas are stationary right now, so we're going to activate them. We're going to say activate three times, and we're going to say that out loud, and then we're going to follow that up with a trinity breath, and that's going to activate and spin all 13 Merkabas. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Activate, activate, activate. activate. Trinity breath. Now imagine all 13 chakras now spinning. Oh, yeah, Merkabas. All 13 Merkabas now spinning. I guess they're chakras in a way, too. Imagine those Merkabas spinning. All of them activated. Sense their motion. You may feel a little bit of stir within your soul, within your spirit. As you can imagine, all 13 of these are activated. Plus, every one of these 13 chakras has your personal aloha energy in them. Feel this energy. Resonate with this. And know that we have done some planetary healing, rejuvenation, awakening, shamanic death, and rebirth. Feel the energy of renewal in your divine self. Outstanding. Now let's move right into our tea ceremony. If you will, you know that we have the Merkaba or Aloha bubble around us. Jeannie is going to prepare our tea and she pours our tea to take. So remember, if you don't have green tea, use any kind of tea. Or if you don't have any of that, use just some kind of liquid to represent that. All right, so let's go through our little ceremony. So let's go through the elemental nature of a tea ceremony that we often do in our Reiki and, and Huna classes. So let's focus on the fire energy. So notice the fire or feel the fire used to, to cook the tea or steam the tea. So that's our fire energy. So just place your hand over the cup. And regardless of the amount of liquid you have, just, just imagine a, a steamy fire right there. Feel it going right into your palm. And now let's look at the earth energy. So imagine the earth energy involved with this. Uh, look at the cup. Look at the tea leaves themselves. So please put, place your hand right at the top. Absorb that earth energy. Okay. And now the air energy. So here we want to pick up the smell. So use your hands to bring the smell of that wonderful tea or liquid to your senses. This is the air energy that we can use from the smell of the wonderful tea, the aroma. And now place your hand right over the top for the water energy. Of course, the liquid, the tea. So absorb that flow of the water. Feel that flow that's going right through your body. Yes. And then as we look at the tea, now the fifth element, the spirit. As we see the steam going up from the tea, or just imagine the, the, the steam going up from a liquid that you would have. Just imagine, just, just kind of fan this, this spirit element, this tea to you. And I'll just say your own little prayer. I'll offer a Hawaiian prayer. So, so great spirit from the inner world, bring forth this water of life and manifest this blessing. So it goes like this in Hawaiian. Aumakua, maika poeola, hoikea, maike ola, a mama. And just drink and feel this tea, this liquid, going all the way down, all through your shoulders. Hello. Oh. 
And now with the unity breath in you, Makabas around you or your Aloha bubble, the tea ceremony, the spirit right in the meditation, we'll come back together at 3.30. If you'd like to enjoy the live chat and uh, we plan on having some other shamans on with us here live. So we'll be able to ask questions and share your experiences. So enjoy this wonderful time, spiritual awakening.
Oha Shaman. So we are back. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for being to a wonderful meditation. Uh, I think we got Amanda's here. So Amanda's checking in. Let me unmute you, Amanda. There we go. So so hope you had a wonderful meditation with us. So how, how did that feel today with you? Uh, for me, that was, it's been a while since Bermuda and Hawaii, since we did that. <laughs> yes, that. So that was really intense. That was a lot of energy. Um, yeah, it's wonderful. Did uh, did you stay inside or, or are you somewhere out outdoors? I'm inside right now. Uh, okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, did you do any prep for today, this morning, or uh, what did you do? Anything? Oh, I, d I did go for a walk in the woods earlier this morning, and then I laid out in the sun for an hour. Oh, okay, so, good. Excellent. Outside with yeah. my dogs. Um, I know. So enjoyed well, it. Didn't get, it didn't yeah. get that dark here. Uh, how how was it where, where you were? No, it kind of just got just light, um, almost like a cloud was over. Yeah, yeah. I, it wasn't that much. So it's a, maybe a little dark now, but I don't know. I, I guess it's kind of gone by now 331 yeah it should be way on out by now uh well uh any big things that you got while you're uh in the, the quiet time the calm space in the the body and mind spirit anything come up being so a pisces i know you had a lot going on anyway so a lot yeah a lot of energy the only thing that word that came up and this came up earlier too was um, balance uh -huh. um, so you know everything right now in the world we need balance Right. So I don't know beyond that what that means, but that's just the word that kind of right. kept coming through is balance. Okay, good. good. Yeah. Well, uh, well, I hope, uh, do you have any ideas of what, how you'll use this energy going forward? Anything come up for you with that? Um, that I miss doing this type of work. <laughs> and, you know, we did it a lot back in 2015. Yeah, uh, we did. 14, all the mystery schools, all the Merkaba, shamanism. And, you know, I haven't been that active and engaged in doing that in the last few years. So I feel like this kind of reactivated for me that, yes, this is what I want to do and share more of. Yeah, so. I, exactly. Well, let me check Heidi in here. Aloha, Farah. Wait. Uh, oh, I think you're on. There we go. I think you're on mute. Now? There you go. Is that it? <laughs> can you hear me? Now we can hear you. There okay. I'm on my phone, so okay. um, I, I couldn't get my computer to work. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, how, how Hi, Amanda. Did you, have a, did you have a great time? Let me see if I can get us all no, in here. Okay. Oh. We'll, we'll squeeze in here. So, so how <laughs> was it as far as you, you uh, had imagined? Was it okay for you? So yeah, it, today's been a beautiful day. I mean, it's been really beautiful, um, not just weather-wise, but just uh, you know, very peaceful feeling. Um, and it's a little, it's dark here now, like not not so much dark. Well, yeah, it's like there's a big cloud over. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so kind of like here. I, I thought maybe it would get a little bit darker, but I, I guess not. We were just right on that partial. It actually got pretty dark here. Um, it, almost like it was like a thunderstorm, like when, when you get ready to have a thunderstorm right. and anyway, so it's actually getting brighter now, but oh, yeah, it's been really beautiful. Yeah. One thing was uh, interesting when Jeannie went to uh, open the blinds to peek out, uh, to the right of the office here and we're looking out, well, I saw this big bird, the shadow flew over. So I knew it was a buzzard. So I thought, wow. So the Syrians are here flying above the house in the eclipse and, and the shadow just went right by. So I could just see the shadow. I said, oh, that's wonderful. Gosh, Death that's and great. rebirth. I know. <laughs> uh, let, me, uh, let me say hello. Uh, aloha, Nicole, if you're still on here. Uh, aloha, living and learning. If you're still on here, got Amanda, got Patricia. So thank you all for being here with us today. So much, good, very good. So, so any, uh, so how do you think the eclipse went as far as uh, the shamanic death, uh, shamanic uh, birth, anything for uh, reawakening or relearning, 
any new projects come to mind, any new revelations in mind, body, and spirit? Y'all can kind of jump in when you feel like you got something. This is not to answer your question. However, <laughs> However <laughs> when we did the activation, when they started spinning the 13th Merkabas. Merkabas. I kept saying chakras because you know they're chakras too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when the 13th started spinning and we did activate, activate, activate in the Trinity breath, it was like just this overwhelming feeling of love. Yes. Uh, the It was like a presence of love in the universe or somewhere. It was just, it was crazy. And of course I teared up. And so yeah. it's my clue that that is exactly what was happening. So mm -hmm. Activated. You felt it. Yeah. So um, I guess I would ask y'all after you answered Dale's question, which didn't look like you were going to, but um, <laughs> what would be, if you wouldn't mind sharing, did you set an intention for yourself or your family or humanity? And if you did, would you share what one of those intentions might be? I'll share mine if you'll share yours. Sure. Go ahead. Amanda, do you want to answer first? Um, so obviously for myself, clarity right now with big, big life decisions. Um, so mm -hmm. clarity for myself, for the world, it was love. And it was interesting when we were originally doing the Merkabas, once we did the first one on land, that one felt different to me. Like mm -hmm. it touched me deeper, something like it was just, it, it just felt different. But oh yeah, right the one right there when we got to Mexico. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So when they were on the the land part, that definitely felt different there. But when we did activate all of them and they were spinning, that was just a lot of energy. Yes. And yeah, the, the tears, the emotions just oh, yay! flowing. <laughs> and, uh, isn't it amazing that you, you can feel the same thing we felt when we were in Bermuda doing the Atlantis and the Atlantic Ocean or probably the continental oceanic polar thing. It, it's amazing how even through cyberspace, it felt the same. But we just didn't have that. Bermuda wind blowing on us, or the Hawaiian wind. But oh gosh, it, it was truly amazing. So. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I almost felt like this one to me, and maybe it's just because it's been so long and I don't remember back then. But this one felt more intense for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. More energy, more power, more intention. I guess more. More of us maybe online were focusing on that energy bubble. We're in Bermuda, yeah. the three of us. Um, but again, it was a long time ago. I can't remember. Yeah, the yeah, details 20, 2015 right yeah. yeah of that one but this one definitely felt different and so my intention for others you know went back to that balance idea and this idea of balance uh, right. the scales yeah. um so that's kind of what i was seeing too yeah that's great yeah. and when you said that this one felt um you felt this more deeply or something and it could be that we are more aware right now of the plight of our world of our planet Mm -hmm. And because of that, our intention is going to be different. Our intention right. is going to to be yeah. more deep, you know, deeper than right. um, maybe in 2015 when we were not awake and aware. So. Yeah, because that was nine years ago. So, you know, we've really grown in nine years as Merkapa shamans so, and shamans yeah. in general. So, yeah, that's yeah. great to be able to facilitate that new energy and to bring in that heightened energy. And feel the depth. Yes, feel it. And a lot's changed on the earth in nine years. So yes, it has. Absolutely. Different feeling. All right. All right, Fire Owl, what do you think? Well, first, Amanda, thank you because I love um I haven't taken Merkaba, but um so anyways, but so I love that you just shared that um that difference. And I'm trying to get my phone right here. I can't get the angle. <laughs> um but so so I love that you just shared that, um, you know, that, that you noticed that difference and the, you know, the difference of um, the awakening, you know, like being more awakened, the earth, basically like all of that. So um, that was actually really cool that you shared that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I actually started out early this morning setting intentions because I knew that I had like huge list. <laughs> so, so what have, I did, did you have the fire? Did you have the fire going? I did. I had I had the fire. So I have a fire going uh this morning. 
And um, basically what I did was I took two pieces of paper and I set intentions for a death and rebirth and a letting go and um, a bringing in. And so on the first page, I, um, I set a lot of intentions and then um, it was, of course, front and back. And um, that was for letting go. And then the, the second page was for bringing in. Um, and that, you know, represents the moon and the sun, the letting go, the moon, the darkness, and the bringing in the sun, the light. So I did a little uh, tobacco ceremony at the fire and I offered tobacco and um, I just uh, gave thanks to the four directions and Mother Earth and Father Sky. And I did that whole thing and I let go. Um, so the intentions of for letting go really for me um, personally and planetary um, is about fear. And, uh, you know, I've struggled with fear uh, for so, so long. Um, and, uh, you know, to the point where it's crippling sometimes. And so I really am so ready to release those contracts to just tear that shit up. Like, I don't want those contracts anymore. <laughs> like, bye-bye, Felicia. Bye, girl. Bye. Um, so I just really wanted to release fear and, you know, set the intention to let go of fear and to also um, set the intention for the collective to, you know, put down fear to just really, you know, try to release that because we have just been so programmed over the last few years um, that I think everyone's nervous system, I mean, how their amygdalas have been hijacked and, you know, everybody's just in this survival mode. And so I really think that letting go of fear and understanding that, you know, we basically put all of this energy and all of this thought into things that haven't even happened yet. And, um, you know, and that's fear. So I, so that was my first intention basically for self and for the planet, um, is to release and let go the, of fear. And then, um, for the lighter side for bringing in, I just, I want to bring in, um, a more healthy environment for myself personally, um, for health and, um, and for the planet to, you know, there's so many people out there dealing with, you know, physical health issues, mental health issues, body, mind, spirit. I mean, we we're just, we're in this, um, yeah, and you know, not everybody, but there's, there's a, a, a large collective and we see it, you know, people are suffering. Um, so I really think that, um, just healing on a personal and planetary level that was one thing that i i put on my list of bringing in now there's a whole bunch of other stuff on both lists but that was basically <laughs> the gist of it so releasing and letting go you know with the intention releasing and letting go of fear for self and the planet and then bringing in health and harmony and balance for self and for the planet i tried to sort of incorporate both so Oh, that's great. Well, it's a great time to do all that clearing, that blessing that you did. Because, you know, when that, that moon goes across like that, it's almost like it cuts the cords of things we don't want anymore. Kind of yeah. like those, uh, you know, like a grand opening somewhere and the mayor shows up and they have those big scissors. <laughs> yep, yep, that's the right. <laughs> it's like the, you yeah. know, when the moon goes by and it kind of cut that light out. <laughs> it's like it cut out all that other stuff that we no longer, no longer works in our lives because yeah. we're offended in so many ways. You know, that yeah. Moon. Uh, energy yeah so that's great that this was the time to do that and especially that you had a a, a real physical fire to do that that's a wonderful part of ceremony. yeah 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 and during the uh, for the meditation and everything i brought in um sacred objects that are sacred to me i brought in my crow feathers and my um my uh my knife that I was gifted for uh, at Qigong for my warrior self and my large, um, I have a large smoky quartz that I feel really connected to uh, for protection. Um, just um, during fearful moments, it, it really, um, it has warned me of things. 
And so I feel really connected to that. So I brought that in. And also too, um, I brought in the, the owl feather that I was gifted uh, from grandfather um, when I had my, you know, a major shamanic death and I was gifted the owl feather. Um, so I brought that in too. And, you know, there's reasons why I brought each of the objects in, but I had all of those with me here during the meditation um, just to solidify the intentions that I set um, on my papers that I wanted to bring in. So I wanted to have all that energy with me in my lap <laughs> while yes. I meditated. So I did cry a little. I'm not going to lie. Oh, that's anytime we get areas to cry. That's good. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, yeah. But it's only for like a second. Cause I'm like, girl, wash that face. Get yourself <laughs> together. <laughs> you know? That's yeah. good. We'll get fire signs. Pull those big me. girl that's panties. Good. <laughs> that's it that's that's wonderful to have that kind of clearing and blessing blessing and clearing. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's wonderful uh when we do that it's a, it's a great ceremonial time i mean it's not like we have this opportunity i think we're not going to have it for another 40 was it 40 or 30 or 40 years the, the next one will happen in america so i uh, don't know where we'll be then when that happens so uh, it's a great time to use the cosmic energy uh, to bring that together and use it in shamanic ceremony. I, I hope so many other people got to experience that in their own unique ways. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, hopefully uh, folks will revert back to uh, this replay and they'll still be able to experience the energy because, you know, all the Merkambas that we just set up, you know, that was set up in dimensional time. So if mm -hmm. people watch the replay, they're going to feel exactly that energy because it, it's locked into the video to that specific time frame. So it's wonderful that even with cyberspace, we're able to use these technological tools to harness that energy and to hold that energy, literally being in the now, regardless mm -hmm. of when they watch it. So it's great that now they're going to be able to hear y'all's perspectives of this and integrate some of that into their ceremony. If not uh, right then for the eclipse, maybe they can integrate it some way, somehow later down the road. So, so thanks for sharing all that. I know those are all deep inner thoughts. So. And if there's somebody still on the chat who would like to share that something that you received during the meditation or during the podcast, please share that with us. Um, yeah. Other people would like to hear that as well, I'm sure. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, if you're still here with us. Yeah, that was a wonderful thing. Good. Right, so anything else that you found to be uh, profound during this particular time, either coming up to the eclipse, during the eclipse, and now that we've had time to assimilate the energy some or anything that we've said that maybe that jarred something in you, uh, anything that you want to add to help people to assimilate this energy a little bit better? I think the only thing that comes to my mind that came up earlier was, you know, people becoming more aware of their multidimensionality. Mm. Um, and that is part of that awakening. But in order to expand our consciousness level and rise up, um, you know, to be aware of that, that it is within us, around us. Yes. It is us. Um, mm -hmm. So to tap into that to help the planet too. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah, because yeah, we definitely want to be doing our uh, creating planet aloha. That's what we wanted. And, you know, during the macabre, the way we did, that's a wonderful planetary blessing uh, to stretch those energies across, especially, you know, when we start doing two oceans, that brings in a lot of energy when we're able to do that. As I'm sure Pisces, you felt the energy, the pull from, from both of those oceans. Uh, let me pull up that slide again, just so people can see it, uh, of how the Merkaba looked. So, you know, so you can see, again, we started in the Pacific Ocean, went all the way across through Mexico, through the heartland of America, and then we ended up uh, southwest of Ireland. So we went all the way from Mu, Lemuria, to Atlantis or the Atlantic. And then we crossed the heartland of America. So it was some wonderful energies. And you see that little wave that it made as we go across. So that's wonderful that those 13 uh, uh, Merkabas now, and really there are 13 chakras, new chakras mm -hmm. on Mother Earth, that Mother Earth, uh, Father, Son, they can also assimilate these, these Merkabas slash chakras. And they can exchange the energy, the the, the love energy between Mother Earth and Father Sky. And now uh, they have a new portal in order to do this. And just think, 
all of us and everyone else that participated in this, their energy will be there really forever. So that's a wonderful thing to, to have that kind of impact. So, so thank you all for being part of that. That's great. Well, any uh, any final thoughts you can think of as we as we go through uh, the last bit of this broadcast? Anything that oh, you? I want to hear Jeannie's intentions. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. oh, there's a call. Oh, see. oh wait, let me pull up the call. Our other Pisces at the beach. Okay. For me, it was so wonderful to be back with y'all in the Macaba ceremony. Uh, Brandon and I were outside during the meditation. And also kept feeling the love, oneness, and connection that we all share. Yes, so wonderful, Nicole. Thank you for doing that. So we know that we had a Pisces and a Cancer down there in Wilmington joining us and spreading that energy across the state. So thank you so much for that. All right, love. Knowing that Amanda would hold me accountable. Yes. So I was waiting. Let me let Leo had the full yeah, screen. Yeah, she would I'll call just, me out. Yeah, let me slide over. No, no, it's not oh, okay. Oh, well, no. Um, my important intention, I think, was for humanity, and that was that we would reclaim our freedom and that we would have our sovereignty. sovereignty. Mm. Oh, that's good. Sovereignty. Yeah, that word, and that all the children would be. Yeah. Because oh my. We know, we know that it is all about the children. Yes. Mm. So that was my intention, and I, I'm praying that we're getting there. So yeah. I just getting, got chills. Yes. Yes, indeed. We're getting there. Uh, and then, you know, one of my intentions, too, was to put this on cyberspace is <clears throat> I wanted people to realize how fun and sacred ceremony is. And, you know, now, yes, it's great if you can do it in person, but, you know, when you can't do it in person, we notice that we can still experience many of the same feelings, uh, even the same intensity through cyberspace because we're all in the now. We're all in that great diamond, our soul or spirit, right? It's in this wonderful diamond together forever. So it's wonderful that we can pick up and feel that energy, uh, whether it's cyberspace or in person. So I would just encourage everyone to, to understand and appreciate all the ceremony and all the rituals in their life. Because remember, everything we do is ritual and ceremony. Uh, you know, just think the way we get into a car, right? We look into the mirror, we adjust the mirrors, we adjust the seat, we put the seatbelt on, we, you know, we start the car, we put it in drive or whatever, reverse, uh, you know, and same thing. When we get to work, we do certain things to our desk, to our work area. When we're at home, we do the same thing. So, yeah, it's, it's great that we're able to do that with Sarah. Mm -hmm. Anything for y'all? Anything else? Lasting thoughts to let the people know for solar eclipse 2024. Oh, Patricia. Oh, wait, we got one more. Hold that thought. Let me pull up. Uh, <laughs> Trisha, Trisha was with us uh, down at Emerald Isle a couple of weeks ago. So right, go ahead. She says, I had a pretty pro um, profound two weeks leading up to this eclipse. So today during meditation was mainly a release, a closure, and rebirth for my soul. It was lovely. That's oh. beautiful, Trisha. Thank you. Thank you, Trisha. Thank you. Sharing. Yes, wonderful. And being a water sign, I know that you really felt uh, that moon energy as it did go across the, the path of the sun. Yeah. All righty. Goddesses of the eclipse, anything, any lasting thoughts you'd like to leave people with? I just want to remind people like, you know, when we have um, times like this, like an eclipse or, you know, a full moon or, or any type of like, you know, earth energy that we um, are given, you know, use the time, use it. Um, because, you know, use it to, uh, to basically just like we did today for releasing and renewal, you know, just like tune in a little bit more and pay attention to how you can use earth energies to, you know, cultivate so much more in your life than you know than you believe that you can and um and to not get caught up in the whole um negative aspect of things that people share you know there every time somebody talks about uh, mercury retrograde or you know like there was all this doomsday stuff about the eclipse and yes. everything and i just want to remind people you know that's all fear based so, you know, understand that, um, you know, grandfather told me this a long time ago, um, 
when I was stuck in a, in a spot and, you know, we have experiences and we go through these experiences, but don't stay there. Don't stay in that. You don't have to stay in that. You just recognize that it's an experience in my life. These things happen. This is how I feel about it. This is how I felt, you know, um, but don't stay in that because another experience is on its way. <laughs> so, yes. you know, as well, soon as, yes. I mean, it just, it is. So I just really encourage people, um, you know, just like this, the eclipse, it's such a beautiful time to take the lessons that mother earth is giving us, um, the energies that she gives us, the energy that the planets give us all of that and just take all that and, you know, use it to, to help yourself, you know, to get through things or to, uh, you know, to rebirth or, you know, whatever it is, but just understand that we get these energies and really they can help push so much in your life forward. And it, it's such a blessing. So, um, you know, just try to try to stay out of that negative mindset of, you know, and there's nothing wrong with having, you know, we have to have negative and, and positive, but, you know, there's just some people that just want to completely stay in that negativity of just looking at all of the dark, uh, the dark side of everything. So, you know, just try to use these opportunities to have that balance and see what happens. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. Wise wisdom from Fire Owl. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Pisces, any, any lasting thoughts you want to share people with or a special or a special Pisces blessing? You can help people with the flow of all this mm -hmm. from the water sense that you're able to help people, especially like since you're a hula teacher, anything about the hula, anything about movement that you could add to helping people to, to work on that flow as we find our way coming out of this eclipse. Yeah. So yeah, movement is a great way to move energy, movement of walking or dancing and just doing whatever you're doing with joy, right? Comes back yes. to that. Yeah. Um, yes. And the, the joy of expressing yourself through whatever joy of walking in your neighborhood and seeing the beautiful neighbor's yard, just appreciating all the beauty that's around us everywhere. So yes. that's kind of my Pisces words, I guess, to end here. But just also, I appreciate the coming together of, you know, even virtual space of all of us coming and sharing our energy today doing this. Um, yes. You know, we stopped doing other things and came together. So that's really beautiful. And then people who watch the replay, they're still here with us because time really doesn't exist. Right. So they're still <laughs> in here with us at this moment yeah. doing, doing the work, too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. And have a wonderful time with your labyrinth walk tonight. I, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, post and you have to, Yeah, like update us on that because I'm curious to see like how everybody was feeling. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It'll be yeah. interesting. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, this Patricia. is the first one, yeah, first one I've done in the evening at dusk. So it'll be interesting that in itself, but also what people have experienced throughout the day and then coming to this mm -hmm. to kind of maybe ground it in through walking at the labyrinth um, and mm -hmm. see what revelations they get as the light and darker change right there at dusk too. Yeah. I got chills when you said that. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you know, I just got, I got a flash. I just got an image. You know, how you know how I am about hearing voices in my head. <laughs> so uh, Amanda, I saw you in the center of that labyrinth and you were doing a very slow hula and people were walking to the center of that labyrinth and they would be circling around you and they would pick up your energy wave and your rhythms and then they would just walk right on out. Oh my gosh. It, it was almost like a, if you could see it from above, like a drone, it was like they were just moving in and they would circle around it. It was like this little flow and they would just circle right back out. Oh gosh, that was great. I have to bring a drone and put it above you. So you can see that. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. Send some video. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, right. and I don't think these feelings are going to end at midnight tonight. I think uh, we're going to feel the effects of this eclipse for days, weeks, months to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's wonderful. Yeah, especially since this one, you know, it's just been seven years since the other one in 2017. So there's got to be something magical about that. So, yeah. And aloha, Tricia. Thanks for being here.
Hey, much aloha to you too. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll let y'all go. Y'all hang out after I go off of here and we can talk and discuss if you will. So everybody, thank you for joining us. Make sure you share this uh, with uh, your friends so they can still feel the energy that uh, eclipse aloha and especially with the uh, with the macambas that we're able to place along the path of the eclipse. And these are now new new chakras from Mother Earth and Father, Son to use and to relate with. So thank oh. you very much for that. Uh, wait, we got yeah. Beth. Thank you, Beth. Great for the opportunity to share in this. A reminder about renewal. Yes, indeed. So ho- hope you have a great renewal, Beth, with mind, body, and spirit. And thanks, Heidi, for sharing this. Hey, with Beth. You. Yes, thank you so much. For inviting her. All right, yeah. thank you, Beth. Thank you, Heidi Fire Owl. All right, just remember everybody mm-hmm. out there, just be the aloha in every moment. Okay, and let's do a pow, and then we'll get you out of here. Okay, ready? On three. Right? One, two, three. Pow! All right. Much <laughs> aloha, and we love y'all.